This is the light 12-pounder model 1857 cannon, nicknamed the Napoleon for the man who pushed its development, Emperor Napoleon III of France. It could shoot a 12-pound iron ball a mile or more. It could shoot bursting shells into enemy concentrations to kill and disable soldiers. It could fire canister, Ready. tin cans filled with solid iron balls into charging soldiers at point-blank range. Fire. The Napoleon was a very effective weapon, the most widely used artillery piece on both sides of the Civil War. A good gun crew can fire four aimed shots a minute with the Napoleon. But it takes, under ideal conditions, 10 men to do it. Two men, the highest ranking, are full-time observers. One, a commissioned officer, is the chief of section, commanding this gun and one other. The other man, a non-com, is chief of the piece and commands this gun. Both men watch the effects of the firing and order changes as needed. Two more men are stationed some distance behind the gun, where they take care of the limber and its ammunition chest. Still another man runs back and forth, carrying ammunition up to the cannon. Five men are stationed at the cannon, but only one of them, the gunner, has a title. The rest are simply numbered. The gunner gives the orders to load and fire the cannon. It is he who actually aims the gun, using a brass sight, but relying mostly on knowledge and experience. He chooses the right ammunition, estimates the range, judges the elevation, and calculates the effect of wind on his shot. And he does it almost instinctively. Ready? Once fired, the gun has to be cooled off and cleaned out. So, while the number three man thumbs the vent, cutting off air to anything burning inside, the number one man of the crew sponges out the barrel. By this time, the ammunition carrier has brought up another round ready for loading. Each round of ammunition is made up of three parts a flannel bag containing two and a half pounds of black powder, a wooden disc called a sabot, and a 12-pound iron ball, all held together with metal straps and cords. When this package is rammed down the barrel, the powder bag winds up directly beneath the vent. But while the sponging and loading are taking place, the gunner is setting his sight. He slaps the stock trail to move the gun left or right, turns a knob to elevate or depress the gun barrel, gives the order, Ready! grabs his sight, and moves back out of the way to watch the shot. The flannel bag is pierced from above with a sharp metal pick, exposing the gunpowder for instant ignition by the primer, which in this instance is a hollow copper tube filled with a gunpowder compound. A twisted wire runs through the tube at right angles. When the wire is pulled, friction ignites the priming powder, which sets off the larger charge of gunpowder. The primer tube shoved deep into the vent and held there while the lanyard takes the strain. And the gunner shouts the order to... Fire! Load! The gun is made ready to fire again.
During the Civil War, a four-gun battery was usually made up of 90 men, 130 horses, 20 limbers, 12 caissons, one battery wagon, one traveling forge, and supply wagons. This is the way it was with one Confederate gun crew. Get the limber. Boom. promotion when firing.
1.9 degrees shell. 